Ahoj, ahoj a vítaj pri novom podcaste Chcem sa učiť. Ja som Andrea, lektorka anglického jazyka a dnes pokračujeme v čítaní knižky The Adventures of Tom Sawyer a ideme na posledné dve kapitoly 5. a 6. Teda ak si nepočul prvé dve a potom tretiu a štvrtú, chod si vypočuť dva podcasty dozadu, nech vieš o čom je tento príbeh a môžeš teda počuť všetko od začiatku. Tento príbeh je pre... Ľudí, ktorí majú už základy angličtiny nejaké, poznáš už minulý čas, prítomný čas, nemusíš mať ešte nejakú extrémne úžasnú slovnú zásobu, pretože táto knižka používa naozaj jednoduché slovička. Takže choď na to a my teda poďme pokračovať ďalej. Chapter 5 In the cave The next Saturday was Becky Thatcher's birthday and all Becky's friends were very excited. It's going to be a wonderful day, Becky told Tom. We're going to have a picnic by the river, and after that, we can visit MacDougall's cave. So, in the morning, a big boat took Becky, Tom, and all their friends down the river. There were some older children on the boat too, but all the mothers and fathers stayed at home. Picnics are better without them. And it was a very happy, noisy picnic. After the picnic, the children took out their candles and ran up the hill to the cave. The mouth of the cave was dark and some of the children were afraid at first. But caves are exciting, so in the end, everybody went in. MacDougall's cave was very, very big, with hundreds of tunnels and rooms. The tunnels went up, down and into the hills for miles. You could walk for days in MacDougall's cave. Nobody knew all the cave, but many people knew the tunnels near the door. You could play all days in these tunnels. Tom, of course, knew them well. For hours the children walked and ran through the cave, up and down the tunnels, in and out of the rooms. In the evening, they came out and walked down the hill to the boat, tired but happy. When the boat arrived back in St. Petersburg, it was dark. Huck Finn saw the boat and did not know about the picnic. He didn't go to birthday picnics, of course, because the mothers of St. Petersburg didn't like him. But tonight, Huck was only interested in treasure, Joe's treasure. Joe was in an old building by the river, and Huck waited in the street near that building. Perhaps, he thought, Joe's cross in there, and the box of money. I must wait and watch. I can tell Tom about it tomorrow. But Joe didn't come out. At midnight, it began to rain and Huck waited all night in the cold street. In the morning, he couldn't move and he couldn't speak. He felt cold, then hot, then cold and then hot again. Mrs. Douglas, a woman from the church, found him in the street. She took him to her home and put him to bed. And there he stayed for two weeks. He was very ill and so he didn't hear about Tom and Becky. But on Sunday, morning after all St. Petersburg knew about Tom and Becky, because they were not on the boat when it came back to the village. Where are they? Were they lost in the cave? And were they alive or dead? At first, Tom and Becky played with their friends in the cave. Then Tom wanted to go down a new tunnel and Becky went with him. They walked and talked and went into a second tunnel and then third. Sometimes Tom put a mark with candle smoke on the tunnel wall. He wanted to find the mouth of the cave again. Then they came out of the tunnels into a big room. There were hundreds of bats in that room and the candles woke them up. Tom took Becky's hand and they ran into the nearest tunnel with the bats behind them. But one bat 
hid Becky's candle and it went out. The children ran and ran through the tunnels and at last they got away from the bats. They stopped and sat down. Suddenly it was very, very quiet. Where are we now, Tom? Becky whispered afraid. I don't know, said Tom. I think it's time to go back, but we can't go through the big room because of the bats. Let's go down this tunnel. They went down one tunnel, then a second, a third, the fourth. Then they wanted to find a big room with the bats again, but they couldn't. Becky began to cry. Tom, we, we can't get out. We're lost, Tom. We're lost. They walked and walked. When they were tired, they sat down. Then they got up and walked again. Time went by. Was it day or night? They didn't know. Then Tom wanted to find water. They had nothing to eat and they must have something to drink. They found a very small river and sat next to it. Becky, said Tom, we must stay here, near this river. This is our last candle and... He did not finish, but Becky understood. Tom? Yes, Becky. Are they going to come and look for us? Of course, when the boat gets to St. Petersburg. But how can they find us in these hundreds of tunnels? Oh, Tom, Tom, we're going to die in here. Becky began to cry again. Then the candle went out and the two children were in the dark. They sat for hours and hours. They slept a little, then woke up, then slept again. Was it Sunday now or Monday? The two children listened. They heard it again, a little nearer. They called back. Then they began to walk down the tunnel in the dark with their hands on the wall. They stopped and listened again, but now they couldn't hear anything. Slowly, they went back to their river. They slept again and woke up very, very hungry. Perhaps it's Tuesday now, Tom thought. What can I do? I must do something. Then he had an idea. Becky, listen, I've got a long string in my pocket. I can go down some of the small tunnels and get back to you with the string. You wait here. Slowly and carefully, Tom went down the first tunnel on his hands and knees. Then the tunnel wall on his right finished and there was nothing. Tom put out his hand to feel the floor. And just then, away to his right, he saw a hand. A hand with a candle. At once, Tom called out, Help! he cried. The hand moved and Tom saw an arm and a face. It was Joe! Tom was very afraid, but Joe was afraid too, and he quickly ran away down the tunnel. Tom went back to Becky, and he didn't tell her about Joe. Tom waited for an hour, then went into the different tunnel with the string. Then a third tunnel... It was Tuesday evening, and St. Petersburg waited. Many of the villagers were in the cave, and they looked for the children day and night. But they heard nothing, saw nothing, and found nothing. Then, late that evening, there was a sudden noise in the streets. People began to run to the Thatcher's house. They're here! Becky and Tom are here! Most of the village came to listen to Tom's story. It was in the sixth tunnel, he told them. I went to the end of my string and suddenly I could see daylight. There was a little hole in the cave wall. I put my hand out and there was the river right under my nose. I went back and got Becky and we climbed out through the hole. Then we stopped a boat on the river. We were five miles from the mouth of that cave. Tom was very tired after his three days in the cave and he went to bed and stayed there for two days. He heard about Hug and went to see him on Sunday and then every day. 
but Mrs. Douglas was always in the room. You can just say hello, she told Tom, and then you must go. Huck is very ill and he needs to sleep. So Tom couldn't talk about anything exciting and couldn't tell Huck about Joe. One day, about two weeks after the picnic, Tom was in Becky's house and her father came in. Well, Tom, Mr. Thatcher said, would you like to go back to that cave again one day? I'm afraid of that cave, said Tom. Mr. Thatcher laughed. There are a lot of people like you, Tom, but nobody's going into that cave again. There are big doors across the cave mouth now, and nobody can open them. Tom's face went white. But, Mr. Thatcher, Joe's in that cave. An hour later, 50 men were at the cave and they opened the door. Joe was on the ground, dead, his face to the door and his knife in his hand. Chapter 6. Under the Cross The day after Joe's funeral, Huck was out of bed. He and Tom walked slowly out of the village. They had a good long talk and Huck heard all about the picnic, the cave and Joe. We're never going to find the money now, said Huck. Huck, said Tom, the money isn't in St. Petersburg. It's in the cave. I know it is. Why was Joe in the cave? Because he took the box of the money there, right? Huck looked excited. Say that again, Tom. The money's in the cave and we can get to it easily. Let's go there now. I've got some candles and a long string. We can take a boat and put it back later. Twenty minutes later, the boys were in a boat on Mississippi. They went eight miles down the river and then Tom stopped by the small trees. Here we are, he said. Tom's hall was just behind the trees. Tom took a candle and climbed in. Huck climbed in after him. Joe never found this hall, said Tom. Or he did find it and couldn't get through it. It's very small. The boys went carefully through the tunnels with their string. Then Tom stopped. I saw Joe about here, he said. And look, Huck, there's the cross. There was a big smoke cross on the tunnel wall. The boys looked up and down the tunnel, but there was no box of money. Joe said, under the cross, said Tom. Perhaps it's under the ground. Look, we can move these stones. The boys took their knives and began to dig by the tunnel wall. Very soon, they found a second, smaller tunnel under the wall. They climbed down into it and came into a small room. There was a bed, two whiskey bottles, some old shoes and the box of money. When somebody finds treasure, everybody hears about it very quickly. The two boys carried the box through the village and when they got to Aunt Polly's house, half the village was with them. Everybody went into the house. Oh, Tom, Tom, cried Aunt Polly. What is it now? And what have you got there? Tom put the box on the table and opened it. There were twelve thousand dollars in that box and suddenly Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn were the richest people in St. Petersburg. The end. A toto je koniec našej knižky, čiže keď si si vypočul všetky tri podcasty, máš to za sebou, je to super. Daj mi vedieť, či si tomu rozumel, alebo na budúce potrebuješ, aby som čítala ešte pomalšie. Vieme to urobiť aj takýmto spôsobom. Stačí mi dať vedieť. Netreba sa báť, treba sa ozvať. Teším sa na vás pri ďalšom podcaste, kde trošičku zabrdneme znova do gramatiky a vysvetlíme si pred minulý čas a keď ho používame. Veľakrát si to ľudia predstavujú ako niečo strašné, ale má to logiku, je to jednoduché, čiže naozaj naučíme sa to pokojne a šťastne, aby keď náhodou píšeš test v škole alebo rozprávaš nejaký príbeh, tak si ho vedel správne zaradiť a použiť. Počujeme sa. Bye bye.